3,800-pound thrust of Chenko turbo fan. Match the uh, rugged field capability with the trailing link undercarriage. They also fitted an auxiliary power unit, so you didn't have to have all of that ground support equipment wherever you took it. Well, the Russians were nothing if not practical, and uh, you talk about the uh, trailing undercarriage, of course, um, we have a look at the nice, smooth runway that we see here that we're used to in the Western world, uh, particularly back in the Soviet era. They didn't really enjoy such smooth runways. Uh, concrete, basically the centre line of the fuselage, plus uh, air-to-air -air missiles that uh, have them on the um, on those hard points. You know, there's a lot of these aircraft going around in the, in the, in the US and the famous uh, Reno air races. In fact, Mark Tracy, who's flying this jet now, actually has another one of these over there in, uh, in Nevada in the US, uh, which he has flown. I'm not sure if he's actively doing it this season, but uh, he's had quite some success uh, flying over there, flying the Australian flag uh, with his L-39, along with uh, Lockie Onflo, uh, who flies the, the older L-29. The hardest part about uh, Lockie and Onslow flying those jets is listening to who was the best out of the tour. And funny enough, I uh, met those two at the pub last night and I thought, uh, well, you know, I might try and start up a conversation and, uh, and see if I can get them sort of bouncing off each other, but uh, neither was giving an inch, unsurprisingly. <laughs> Fun guys, great guys. Now, the aircraft can also be fitted out as a target tug and has become probably the most popular jet civilian aircraft in the world. You see these in every country. Quite a lot of them operating in the United States. And uh, there were a couple of... And with so many of these L-39s coming on, so they're all over the place. Like Albania is littered with these jets. They're in little bunkers and sitting along taxiways all over the place. Now, if you think that you might have seen uh, this aircraft before somewhere, um, it is actually uh, a type that flew in the James Bond movie, Tomorrow Never Dies. Yes, if I recall, uh, James Bond, when he uh, took one of these and sort of... His seat is absolutely incredible. It is a very simple aircraft, and this is one of the reasons why you know, there are so many of them operating over in, uh, in the United States and uh, UK and Europe. Um, they seem to go forever. Uh, you can't seem to break them. And they just look beautiful. You certainly get the Russian experience too, uh, riding in the back of this. It's, um, everything, all the cockpit gauges are all in Russian, all in Cyrillic. And uh, for the aviators amongst you who are used to looking at an artificial horizon in a standard Cessna cockpit or whatever, everything kind of looks upside down in the back of that jet. I think it's a bit disconcerting. It's the same in the... Um I actually know with great interest uh, that it was six years ago to the day today that I last rode in this jet. I think I should hit Mark up for another ride. I think we are playing in. So great commentary there and um, it deserves... Actually calling off the uh, Japanese fighter protection over their carriers and allowing the American dive bombers to decimate those carriers. That was the first major feat of the Japanese in the Second World War. Later in August 42 at the bottom of the East Solomons, uh, Avengers from the Saratoga and the Enterprise sank the Ryujo, the Japanese carrier, and later in November of that year, Marine Corps and Navy Avengers sank the battleship PAE at the, uh, the Battle of Royal Canal. that these guys were involved with was uh, right towards the end of the second war and another one underneath the fuselage at the uh, rear of the bomb bay where that notch is. Could also carry a torpedo, a, sorry, 2,000 pounder bombs or a 2,000 pound Mark 18 torpedo. Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> now that's just the take up. He's just getting himself warmed up, feeling himself back into the aeroplane there. Now he is in a rapture harness. He actually bolts himself into the aeroplane. And everything in this performance happens very, very quickly. designed by Walter Extra. Beautiful car right there. Three hundred horsepower Lycoming engine and it can be fitted with either three or four bladed props. He said this routine that he's going through, if you have a look on the Facebook page, you could probably actually follow it. He's standing next to the aircraft and running through it from start to finish. The same thing he does with the Red Bull Air Force. I don't know how I'd go with all of that, but uh, I'd certainly have a go. I see he's such a good pilot. I mean, the Red Bull Air Race, second twice? Second twice, 2015 and 2016. Bit of a slower start this year, brand new plane in the race for this one, so he's working in, tuning in, and uh, hopefully by the end of the season he's back to his race winning ways. Former fighter pilot with the Art of IF, he achieved absolutely everything that you could possibly achieve. He's uh, actually also flying at 15s in combat on the first night of the Iraq War. Aviation, they look after a lot of aircraft people have seen today. Also, close runway. That's what it's close past. 